QuickBooks Online Refund Receipt Form. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, picking the option that has the Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. We're selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Holding down control, zooming in a bit up on the scroll wheel, currently at 125% on the zoom in. Remembering that in the cog drop down, we could be using the business or the accountant view. We're using at this time the accountant view. We'll try to toggle back and forth between the two, possibly at the end, so you can see where the locations are under the two views. We're going to go up top and duplicate some tabs as we do every time to put reports in. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. As that one's thinking, tab to the, to the left. Reports on the bottom and opening up our favorite balance sheet. As that is thinking, we're going to go to the tab to the right. Reports on the left and open up the P&L profit and loss or income statement going to close up the tab up top or the hamburger the ham boogie as i call it sometimes we'll change the range and we'll do that by going 010122 january 1st 2022 tab 123122 december 31st 2022 tab run it update it refresh it whatever you want to call it then we're going to go to the tab to the left and close the ham boogie again scrolling up to the top changing the range in so it's going to go from 010122 tab, 123122 tab, just January through December 2022 and run it, update it. Then tab to the left. That's the setup process that we do every time. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Now we'll hit the plus button. We've been looking at the customer area where at the end of the day, we expect money to be coming into our checking account for goods and services that we provided uh, to customers. The easiest uh, kind of system that we might have would be one where we have gig work. We're getting paid by YouTube or some kind of platform, Amazon or something. We wait till it clears the bank and then we record revenue with a deposit form, possibly with the use of the bank feeds. The second easiest format would be at a check register, cash based system, but not so easy that we could just wait till something clears the bank. We record the sale at the point in time we make it at the cash register, possibly with the sales receipt form. And then we make the deposit uh, there. So it's another step in the process. And then if we're in the kind of industry where we have to do the work first and then invoice the client, we then do the work, invoice the client, then we have to track and get the receipt of the payment from the clients and make then the deposit. Now, what happens if there's a problem in this cycle and the customer wants their money back? That's where we have the credit memo that we talked about last time. And this time we're going to be looking at a similar concept with the sales receipt. Let's, let's look at this in terms of a flow chart to get a better idea. This is the desktop version flow chart, but it, the, it's just a flow chart. We're just looking at the flow here. So if we had a full invoice, then receive payment and then record the deposit type of system and accrual system. If we make the invoice, it increases the accounts receivable. If the customer comes back and wants to return the inventory or reverse the transaction before they have paid us, and they're like, do it or else I'm going to give you a bad like Yelp review or internet review or something. And we're like, okay, okay. Then we can issue a credit memo basically right here, which would reverse the accounts receivable and everything else before we got paid. That's what we looked at last time. But if we made the invoice, received the payment and made the deposit, or if we made a sale at a cash register, for example, and already made the deposit, 
then and then they come back and say, hey, I want my money back. Well, now, if we if we say, okay, don't give me a bad Yelp, we'll, go, we'll pay you your money back. You would think that maybe you could just issue a check, and you kind of could. You can say, I'm going to give you a check to basically give the money back. But um, you also have the in, the inventory that could be involved and so on. And we'd also like to track the the information in the customer center. So that's what we're basically looking at here. So instead of having a credit memo in that situation, we're looking at uh, the the refund receipt transaction. So we're actually going to basically give the refund and we should, instead of just writing a check or having an expense form, because we will be decreasing the checking account, we want to use the refund receipt form and that will basically track it better in the customer center and possibly reverse the inventory and so on if we need to so that we could see what happened in the future and if we deal with this business again we got to say do we want to do business with them or whatever or that they're the one that threatened us with a yelp review so maybe we maybe we try to keep our distance any case so let's go through the process let's make an invoice and then we'll receive the payment we'll show you the whole process so i'll make an invoice and then we're going to start here so that we can reverse this and so we'll say this is aaa which we'll is starting the same process i'll go through this quickly because we've seen this before and I'm gonna make it with inventory so we can make it uh, the more complex type of transaction. If it was just a service item, then you can just delete some of the complexity with inventory uh, in your mind. And we're gonna say inventory item. I'm gonna say inventory one as the item name and quantity on hand. I'm gonna put 10 on hand and we'll say that as at the beginning of this month, zero is the reorder point for it's going to be the inventory asset account when we purchase them it will go up when we sell from with an invoice it will go down that's what we're doing now description inventory one sales price i'm going to just say is a thousand dollars it's going to go to sale of product income we'll say it is taxable to make it more complicated and then we're going to say the purchase then let's say we purchase it for that 750 again cost of goods sold is the expense account when we sell it, which we're doing here with the invoice. So we're gonna make the invoice so we can then reverse it. And so we'll make the invoice and there it is. What's this gonna do? It's an invoice, accounts receivable is gonna go up by the full amount, 1,080. Other side is sales going up by 1,000. We also have the $80 increasing the accounts payable on the balance sheet, not accounts payable, but sales tax payable. We also have inventory going down by I think we said 750 driven by the item cost of goods sold going up by 750 the sub ledger for AAA customer will also be tracking that they owe us a thousand dollars the sub ledger for inventory will track the item we're decreasing it by one item as well as the dollar amount so let's record it and check it out real quick we're gonna say let's save and close we'll go then to the balance sheet and just check it out I'm gonna say run the report and let's go into the accounts receivable and i scroll down to the bottom and so there it is there's the full amount 1080 i won't drill down anymore because we've seen this before i'm going to go back to the balance sheet then to the tab to the right the income statement i'm going to refresh it the income has going up this time or it should have for what did we sell a product income and i'm going to say that one there it is it went up for the 1000 the difference of $80, I'm going to go back to the income statement, is back on the balance sheet. The $80 difference is in a liability account. So I'm in the liabilities, this board of equalization. That's where the $80 went, sales tax liability in essence. And then scrolling back up, we also note that inventory went down. So inventory is an asset account. We're on a perpetual inventory system, so it's up top in the inventory it went down by the 750 scrolling back up and on the income statement we know that the cost of goods sold was impacted as well cost of goods sold going into it there's the 750 let's go back again let's go back to the balance sheet and just note that the sub ledger for accounts receivable is also impacted so if i go to the tab to the to the right right click on it duplicate it and then we're gonna go then to the reports on the left. And it's important to notice all these connections because when we reverse the transaction, 
we want to see what the implications are and why we might use one form or another. So I know I'm, this is kind of tedious, but we're going to go down here and go to who owes you. We're going to go to the, to the customer balance detail report. And then there's the AAA, the total of this report broken out by customer 636152 ties out to the what's on the balance sheet, which is the 636152 and the inventory will tie out. So if I go to the tab to the right, right click on it, duplicate it, we're going to go to the reports on the left hand side. And we want to look at the inventory report now. So we're going to go into I'll just type up top inventory valuation summary, close up the hamburger. There's the inventory. We put 10 on hand and then we sold one. So there's the units of inventory we have and the total cost 734625 also matches what's on the balance sheet 734625. Okay, now let's say that we actually collected on it. So they're going to they're going to pay us. So if I go back to the first tab, we can go into the sales area on the left. We can find the open invoices under the sales, for example. We can find them here by saying, where's the open invoices? There it is. Next step, receive payment. We can also find them in the invoices tab and look for the open invoices. And I'm going to sort them by date so I can see there it is. I can say receive payment or I can go into the customer and say the customer actually paid us. So we got AAA receive payment. So I, I'm going to record the receive payment. So notice if they didn't give us a receive payment and they came and said, Hey, I want to reverse the transaction now, or else I'm going to give you a bad Yelp review and everybody, and it'll be horrible. You'll have like a one star on your Yelp review. And we're like, no, we could then issue a credit memo at that point, And that would reverse it. But if they already paid us, let's do that. We're going to say they already paid us. So we're saying that everything's going well here. AAA, let's imagine they paid us and we're just going to say cash. It's going to go into undeposited funds because that's the normal process or we could have put it directly into the checking account right now. We talked about that before, but in essence, the receive payment is going to increase some kind of cash account. I'll do undeposited funds and then it's going to reverse the accounts receivable. So I'm going to say, okay, save and close. Let's check that out. Go to the balance sheet. We're going to run it. We've got undeposited funds, which should have gone up by the 1,080. There it is. The other side decreases the accounts receivable. The accounts receivable goes down, going into that and scrolling back down there. There it is, increases and decreases to the AR. The sub ledger for accounts receivable will also be updated. So if I scroll back up top and run this or refresh it, there's no more AAA. The total down here is at 528152, which should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. And then let's just make the deposit to finish this. So I'm going to deposit it from undeposited funds into the checking account. Plus button. We're going to say make the deposit. And it's going to go into the checking account. I'm just going to pick the AAA, the 1080, increasing the checking account. So I'm just going to save that just to finish the, the cycle. And then if I go back to the balance sheet, now undeposited funds went back down. That's not the balance sheet. There's the balance sheet. I'll refresh it. And now in the checking account, we've got the 1080. So we already got the money. So now if I go back on over and the customer comes in and says, Hey, I'm going to go back to the first tab. Uh, I want to return this thing. I want, or else I'm going to, you're going to get you, we're going to yell at you. We're going to tweet at you or something. Like, Don't tweet at us for crying out loud. We're going to go into the AAA and say, but they've already, so we can't reverse it because they already paid us. We're like, we'll give you your money back if you just don't give us a bad tweet. And so then you would think you could do that and say, well, we'll give you money back with a check form or uh, an expense form. And you could, but we would like to reverse everything directly. So instead of insuring the credit memo, we're going to stay in the customer fields over here and say it's going to be a refund receipt now because we're going to give them uh, the money back. So it's going to be an AAA, we'll say. And so and now I'm just going to construct this one just like just like the invoice. So I'm just going to re input the invoice. Let's make it as of 010123. So it'll be in its own area. And then and then uh, the payment method, 
So I'll just keep it, you know, cash. And then the refund from, typically it's gonna come out of the checking account, right? So in essence, this will be kind of like a check form. And if it was an actual check, then we would have a check number. If it's not a check, then and if it was an electronic transfer or something, then maybe we don't have a check number. So this would be kind of like the check form versus the expense form. So we can use, in essence, the same form here, the check form and the expense form they get. Anyways, then we can go down here and say we've got the inventory item. So we're just going to do the same type of thing. And, and there we have it. So what's this going to do? Well, it's a refund receipt. So we're actually going to be, it's kind of like a check form. It's going to be decreasing the checking account. And then the other side, it's going to be for the full amount, the 1,080. The other side is going to go to the, the other side is going to go to reversing, you know, in essence, the in, inventory, the invoice transaction. The best way to think about that might be to actually create the invoice. So I'll just, we did this last time in the credit memo, so I won't, I'll do it slow, like not as fast or not as, <laughs> so we got the accounts receivable goes up with the invoice. The sales went up with the invoice. The sales tax payable went up with the invoice. Cost of goods sold went up and inventory went down. So we're not doing a credit memo, but we're doing in essence the same thing, except we're returning the money now. So if I think about what happened, from a journal entry standpoint, I'm not gonna reverse the accounts receivable because we've already received the payment. Like the next thing that happened, journal entry number two, was that we got cash of the full amount of the 1,080, and then we've got, and then we've, we've got a decrease to the accounts receivable of the 1,080 in essence. So you could, if I was to continue this kind of if I was to reverse everything, I could say I would reverse AR, I would reverse uh, the sales, reverse the sales tax, and then you could say that you're reversing the cash and the accounts receivable. And so this is gonna be a credit and this is gonna be a debit, right? But, but, but these two have already been, so you're not gonna do this again, you're just basically gonna say, well, I'm just going to reverse the cash. So the cash is going to go down when I when I issue this form instead of the accounts receivable because I've recorded it here already. And therefore, it's the same reversal of the invoice, except that the invoice has already been cashed. Therefore, instead of reversing AR, I'm in essence just reversing cash. And I'm not going to do this down here, right? And then I've got the cash. And then the sales is going to be reverse sales tax. And then if I get the inventory back, inventory would go up and the cost of goods sold would go down. Now I have the same issue we had with the credit memo is that the sales is going to be reversed. And maybe I don't like that. Maybe I would rather have it go to bad debt or uh, sales returns and allowances. So we'll do the same thing. We'll record it this way. And then we'll talk about that change, that little twist. So if I reverse this, it's going to reverse exactly what we what we had on the invoice so I'll, I'll save it and close it and we'll just check it out save and close so there it is and i'm going to say okay so now we have this payment having been issued and now i'm in aaa right here and i can see that information so if they come back in and ask me about it or something or if someone else asks me about it then i can see the detail in here with a nice payment kind of form so if my my the my boss comes in and says what happened with this lady that threatened to give us a Yelp review. We're like, yeah, I gave her a refund and I can see it in the activity on the AAA uh, customer here. So that's, that's why it's kind of nice. Whereas a check form might not be as designed to kind of fit in here and it reverses nicely the transaction, you know, kind of automatically by, re by you know, reversing it uh, due to the format of it. So even though it's still kind of like a check form. All right, let's go to the, to the, balance sheet and just take a look at what happened. So it should have re reversed the checking account. So if I go into the checking account, I've got to make this the next year. So let's make this 23 to 23 and then run it. And then I'm going to go into the checking account. And so there's the reversal. There's reversed it like we would expect. If I bring this back on the detail to the prior year and run it, you can see that 
there's the deposit. We made the deposit and then we reversed it with basically a check form. So it's a refund form, which in essence is, is basically like a check form, right? It's, it's going to be decreasing the checking account, but it has a specific purpose to it. So if I go back into it, boom, and then I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to scroll up and go back here. And then the other side is on the profit and loss. Let's go into there and then run this one. So let's change the dates up top to make it to 23 and 12, 31, 2, 3 and run it. And then sales got reversed by the full 1000 here. So if I span that across the two time frames from 22 to 23, we reversed it. That would make sense. We're going to go back up and then say, okay, the sales tax, if I go back to the first tab is a liability. Scrolling down to the liabilities, we've got the board of equalization. Let's go into that. And there's the sales tax got reversed. If I go back to the prior period, 2022, run it, then we've got the sales tax reversed out. And then scrolling back up and the inventory. So if I go up to the asset of inventory, it should get reversed. So there it is, there's the inventory. If I go back to the prior year, let's see the two transactions together, side by side, it got reversed. And then finally, the cost of goods sold on the income statement got reversed. So we're gonna say cost of goods sold, there it is. And if I go to the prior period here to see the two transactions side by side, you see them side by side scrolling back and then also if i go to the balance sheet the inventory sub ledger is going to be updated for inventory in units so that's the accounts receivable isn't impacted because because we are it already got paid we were issuing right so we're going to go back to, but the sub ledger for inventory if i run it for the next to 12 31 2, 3, and then run it now the inventory went back up to 10 units and I'm currently at 8,096.25, which should tie out to the balance sheet of the inventory, which it does. So that looks good. Now the issue here, just like with the credit memo, is that now you've got a decrease to the sales account. Maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I would rather record it to bad debt or sales returns and allowances. I'm just going to assume it's going to go to sales returns and allowances this time. So let's just reverse it to there. So I'm just going to tweak it a little bit. I'm going to go back into my, my, now I'm in my, my customer AAA. And let's say that on the refund, I'm going to tweak it a little bit and say that I don't want to reverse sales. So I'm going to make another item down here, which will be going to sales returns and allowances. I'm going to make another item. I'm going to say new item. I'm not going to make it inventory. You might be able to make it non inventory. I'm just going to call it a service item and I'm going to call it sales returns and copy that and put that in the description. I'm not going to put a price because I will, uh, I will just type in the price. And then I'm going to say that this is going to be another account, a new account, which is going to be an income account, but it will be a contra income account with a negative number in it sales of products other primary income let's call it sales returns and allowances boom save it it's going to have tax uh involved in it so that looks good saving it and closing it then i'm just going to put the amount down here and then delete the amount up top so we end up with the same dollar amount down here because the tax is applied because it was taxed. So we're still going to have this, the refund receipt is going to be making in essence a check decrease in the checking account for the full amount uh, 1080. The other side, instead of reversing sales directly, will be driven by this item now creating a new account sales returns and allowances. So we don't decrease the sales account. We could have made it to bad debt, which would be an expense account. Same concept if you needed to do something like that. And then the sales tax is still being implemented the same way it normally would. So we're reversing the sales tax payable and inventory is still impacted because of this first line. Although there's nothing in it, 
the item is still going to drive the inventory component, which is which was a, you know, usually in an invoice it it decreases the inventory and increases cost of goods sold. So here by the 750, I think we said it was. So here it's going to put the inventory back on the books, increasing it by 750 and decreasing cost of goods sold. Now if we didn't get the inventory back. And, and we're just like, then maybe, then you don't, you could just delete this one. You don't record it at all, right? But if we're getting the inventory and we need to reverse that, there we have it. So let's save it and close it. And I won't go through the whole thing again, but uh, we should have this. Everything should be the same in essence, if if we did everything properly, which I believe we did, but I, but I don't want to get too tedious by going through the whole thing again. The point is on the income statement that now instead of it, making a negative income or lowering income, because we usually like income just to go up, then it's now going to the uh, sales returns and allowances account. So we have a contra account. So if we had income, it would be the income minus, you know, the sales returns and allowances. So that's the general idea. The general idea, just to recap, if you have an invoice and then you're getting, you're gonna, you're gonna reverse it before you get paid credit memo. But if you already got paid either through an invoice or the sale that happened at a cash register, then you got to give them the money back, which you would think would be a check form. But you might want to, instead of issuing the check form, use uh, the, the refund receipt. I hope I've been using the right term and not the sale, the refund receipt form, uh, because that's going to that's going to help you to reverse it, deal with inventory and make it a little bit easier to see, hopefully, possibly in the customer section because it's a customer type form within the customer details so we can explain it to ourselves our supervisors and think about how we want to deal with that client uh, going forward in the future okay let's go ahead and just go to the cog up top and switch to the business view and just to show you some of these areas we've been going to under the other view so we've been looking if i go to the get things done that's the home page and then we opened up the reports and the business overview and the reports area. That's where we went to the you know, balance sheet income statement and the inventory reports and the customer reports. And then in the get paid and pay area, that's where we manage the customer information. So we got the customers, there's AAA under the get paids. We've got the invoices so we can see those open invoices when we enter the invoices. And then if we want to track all the transactions on the sales side of things, we can go to the bookkeeping area, transactions, closing the hamburger, sales. And this is where we've got basically all the sales transactions where we can sort by the open invoices, for example, or we have the capacity to use the other kind of, we have the uh, other types of forms as well that we could sort by here. So there that is.